everyone. And sorry. And I would like to start thanking the organizer of this uh, very stimulating session. I'm very happy to, to be here here to show you some uh, picture of Sicilian rock shelters. Uh, the Riparo di San Tommaso is a uh, uh, place right in the central part of the island. Uh, is in the Enna province and is located just a few kilometers south uh, west of uh, the main town, which is Enna. Uh, the focus of my presentation will be uh, the discussion of, of, of San Tommaso uh, rock shelter used as the focus to understand, trying to understand the development, the constitution of uh, uh, ritual landscapes uh, through the, the periods of concentrating on the second and first millennium. Um, in central part of Sicily, the uh, constitution of uh, sacred and ritual spaces can be uh, understood using two different uh, ways. One is the art use of artificial caves, which means uh, on the uh, left uh, the, the slide, the uh, rock cut tombs, the starting from the third millennium, are basically covering all the limestone, sandstone, <coughs> uh, uh, flesh, rock uh, uh, outcrops, and uh, um, and uh, and cliffs. Uh, the, the second aspect is the use of natural place, uh, rock shelters and caves. Uh, and according, you know, a very fortunate definition by Ruth Whitehouse, uh, evidence of, uh, of an underground religion. Uh, this is uh, carried out in, during the late Neolithic, during the Copper Age in Sicily, using caves with the the position of special objects, painted potteries. Uh, bell beakers, uh, metal objects in the third millennium, starting from the third millennium. Things start to change during the early Bronze Age when uh, uh, caves have been abandoned in the, uh, for the use of ritual uh, uh, activities, but these have been carried out now in the more open spaces. Uh, uh, in the Santuario, the Santuario of La Mocolufa in the center of Sicily is, is dating to the early Bronze Age. It's an open space in, on the top of a high um, cliff with uh, the use of the position of uh, 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 painted, very peculiar painting, uh, painted and anthropomorphic uh, pottery. Um, in this respect, the use of artificial and uh, uh, natural spaces, uh, San Tommaso, the, the rock shelter, is, is uh, quite peculiar. Is a, uh, as I said, is placed just south west uh, position in uh, the Torcicola Valley, which is a small river starting from Enna and flowing for about 15 kilometers before to, to uh, reach the Imera Meridionale, which is the longest river in Sicily, cutting into the entire island. Um, the, this valley has been explored from uh, 1996 until 2006 for 10 years in a project, a joint project with Leicester University and uh, with my good friend Mark Tuchenik that unfortunately passed away two years ago. Uh, we choose this area because there's in a short space, about 15 kilometers, uh, we had a different kind of landscapes, natural landscapes. Uh, in the upper part is very urbanized near Henna. Uh, but it's uh, passing near the, one of the <coughs> few natural lakes, like the Pergusa Lake, which is also the center of intense uh, archaeobotanical and palynological uh, activity, uh, research, and give us a good uh, uh, sequence in terms of uh, paleoclimatic and paleovegetational reconstruction. The lower part of the uh, valley is characterized by a series of rolling hills just before uh, reaching the conjunction of the Torchicoda River with the Imera. In the middle part of uh, its course, the Torchicoda has uh, created this uh, two, two kilometers long uh, gorge, excavating the uh, Pliocene uh, uh, sandstones, the Calcariniti di Capodarso, 
Uh, at the end of this gorge, it's long about two kilometers, is uh, wide about eight, 90 meters, uh, we have a series of uh, very large rock shelters. Uh, this is the archaeological map that uh, came up after 20, well, almost 20, 10 years of, of uh, uh, surveys in the area. Uh, we were able to recognize more, almost 30 new archaeological sites, going from prehistory down to the medieval period. Uh, our rock shelter is uh, 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 number 23. Uh, to get plus, uh, we are also an uh, important part of our pro survey project is regarded the historical buildings. Uh, we were able to document and to study a series of uh, um, structures dedicated to the agricultural and rural development of the territory from the 18th century up to the present day. Uh, as I said, the uh, rock shelter is placed at the end of the gorge. Uh, on the west side, there are two smaller uh, shelters, uh, which have been occupied since the beginning of 19th century, as documented by some archival sources, by rural buildings used by shepherds and uh, farmers. Uh, the largest one is Riparo Uno, which is on the eastern side, eastern bank of the uh, river, which is just flowing just down here. This is a very large shelter, it's about uh, 70 meters long, and it's been f between 15 20 meters large. And as you can see here is a series of rural buildings going back to the 19th century, including a water mill, uh, Molino Nuovo, <coughs> that has been uh, in use since the mid of 19th century until uh, the first part of 20th century, before it being abandoned. Um, when we discovered the site in 1999 with Mark, we were just walking and we were documenting, we have been uh, very excited to find this, you know, uh, historical archaeological monument. The surprise that when we were walking on the surface of this shelter, we started to find uh, prehistoric and uh, Greek shards on the surface. So in uh, the year 2000 and 2001, we, we had the first uh, test pit uh, season, opening a series of trenches in the inner, innermost part of the shelter and also opening other shirts. Uh, and then in 2010, we had a, a proper excavation with uh, uh, Leicester <coughs> University, uh, Enna University. At the time I was uh, teaching at that uh, small uh, university in central Sicily. And we had uh, the possibility to explore this uh, area A and B. Uh, the oldest part documented so far it comes not from the excavation, but from a series of crevices just open below the shelter, from where we found a series of painted early Bronze Age vessels. And particularly the lower vessel is, is a miniaturized uh, pedestal bowl, which in Sicily normally is used in, in a funerary context. The problem is that these crevices are quite dangerous in terms of uh, you know, safety and exploration, so we were able only to visit them very rapidly and collect material that you find on the surface. We need to have a proper uh, safe condition to, to work and to open a, 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 a trench there. But this is the, and this is dating to the late third millennium, early second millennium. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, as I said, in the year 2000, that trench one was uh, two meters per, by one meters, and we reached one, one meter and 70 of depth. On the bottom, uh, which is being created by a series of boulders, probably the collapse of the roof at the beginning of the second millennium for a problem of a, a, a rigidity uh, re regime of the climate that has created this uh, series of collapse that, that we have been documenting in uh, all the uh, gorge. Uh, the um, first archaeological levels above the, the boulders is dating to uh, the middle of the second millennium and is characterized by the presence of uh, grey and plain uh, wares dating, uh, attributed to the local um, Tintari Vallelunga style. 
but includes also a series of uh, deer antlers deposited on the floor. This is this juvenile one. And the archaeological analysis uh, demonstrate that uh, the, 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 the most uh, part of the final uh, assemblage was composed by sheep and goats and uh, pigs, but mostly young animals, but with also a large proportion of red deer, of, uh, of deer. Um, after this uh, period, there was a moment of abandonment of the, of, of the, uh, of the shelter. Uh, and the micromorphological analysis uh, carried out together with James Woodward from Manchester University uh, were able to evidence the fact that uh, the late early Bronze Age and the following phases, the late Bronze Age, the, the shelter was used as a, probably a pastoral site for, uh, for stabbing animals. But the presence of uh, red deers deposited, antlers deposited, the quality and the, the position of the painted pottery uh, suggests a possible use either as a funerary or for ritual uh, uh, purpose. Uh, but uh, one thing that could uh, in a way prove <coughs> is the presence during the late Bronze Age, which is this level here, of an enormous quantities of turtle, of Teresa turtle, that has butchering uh, marks and uh, signs of burning uh, of the carapax, the, the, the skeleton of the, of the turtles. Uh, after a period of abandonment, the gray layer here, the, the shelter has been reoccupied during the, well, this are the, the, is a fireplace dating to the late Bronze Age near, you see here in the photo plan. Uh, nearby there is a small pit fill up with the Pantalican or the late Bronze Age wares and uh, animal bones. After, say, the, after a period of abandonment, the, the site has been occupied during the Iron Age in a thick layer of ashes uh, characterized by the burning of uh, organic and wooden structures probably used for the stabling. There's been a series of uh, pits and postals that don't have uh, any apparent uh, organization. And then during the, the last phase we have documented inside the, the shelter is, is the Greek archaic period, dating from the 7th to the late 6th, beginning of 5th century BC, when uh, the uh, site has been monumentalized and probably definitely used as a ritual space. Uh, is a, there is a large wall, we expose only, uh, well only, we expose about 5 meters long a part of this wall, which is a circular wall, a kind of enclosure, which is delimiting and closing the inner part uh, uh, part of the, of the shelter, uh, which is very similar to other uh, indigenous Greek archaic sanctuaries in uh, Sicily. Policello is the most famous one with these round buildings, but also Montagnoli, Colemadore, Sabucina. So the round buildings are always connected with the ritual use. Uh, furthermore, in, uh, the, 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 the external, the internal part of the area uh, separated by the enclosure wall has been paved and on top of the, below and above the, the floor, uh, we have uh, um, the position of uh, the antlers. So it's a tradition continuing. And in the inner part, we have a series of pits with the position, you see here, kind of uh, votive deposition, uh, with these pits filled up with intentionally broken vessels, Greek and indigenous production, and uh, uh, animal bones, mainly young pigs. Uh, turtles are still used, but we don't have any evidence of butchering of, of consumption of turtles during the Greek period. Um, just to rapidly go into the conclusion, uh, reading the, so I'm trying to, um, it is possible to underline the strong similarity of the San Tomaso enclosure with the round shrines of Polizello and others uh, indigenous sanctuaries of central and western Sicily. Formally, these structures and the deposition exposed in the upper layers of uh, San Tomaso show an evident affinity with uh, these other contemporaneous sanctuaries. From a social and religious point of view, however, it is possible to underline some differences. Differently from the other cult places, in fact, the shelter is the only shrine placed outside an urban urban, urban context. 
It's either location within the Tochicoda Gorge, distant from the main communication routes, make this a site accessible only intentionally, by whom had the specific reason and the will to reach it. Uh, the uh, site is being placed in a context with a very dense occupation during the uh, indigenous and the Greek archaic period, and uh, particularly is uh, placed near Ekotsu Yukulia, which is one of the sites which have been located through the Tochikoda Valley project, which yielded a clear evidence of Greek occupation dating from the 7th to the 5th century. It's probably a small Greek frurion, a military post controlling hostile indigenous territory. While the various sanctuaries known in central and western Sicily were actively used by local elites in order to establish and to consolidate the hierarchical status and power within their communities, influenced by the developing Hellenization process, the Santo Maso Shrine was probably used directly by the Greek colonists as meeting point for interaction and exchange with the indigenous communities, a social and a, regional, a religious liminal place acting as a redistribution locus between the economy of inner Sicily and the coast. Thank you.